Christian. I'm Ramon. This Monday, Thursday. Just a couple of announcements to make before we begin our service. First of all, thank you for uh, tuning in to us today in our time still of social distancing. We appreciate you taking the time out at home and watching with us um, online. Uh, we'll be uh, live also tomorrow on Good Friday at 6.30 in the evening, and then on Easter Sunday at 9.30 in the morning. So please join us for those times as well as we continue to worship our Lord. If you're not able to be with us live at those times, you can always go on YouTube and find us there, and, and those uh, services are uh, there for your uh, viewing at any time that you find convenient for you. Uh, we still are accepting flower donations for our Easter decorating. We do want to have some uh, lilies and so forth for our Easter morning service. If you could have them, the flowers here by 11.30 tomorrow morning, that's Friday morning, uh, that would be real helpful. Uh, put your name on it so that we can get it back to you at, at the proper time. And then there's a memory sheet that will be available too if you are giving flowers in memory of someone. Uh, one last announcement. Traditionally, the Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter services, it's considered one worship service in three parts. Okay, so as we go through this service today and tomorrow, you'll notice, well, where's the benediction today? Where's the benediction on Good Friday? Well, this is just kind of a progressive service. Uh, through today, tomorrow, and Easter Sunday. So just keep that in mind as we make our way and, and uh, how the, the services uh, lay out in that way. With those announcements made, let us prepare to worship our Lord by singing together the opening hymn to the omniscient Lord of all.
and confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence Judgments. I am the Lord. 
the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse 11. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls, and with the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 26, beginning at the, third, the 17th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We continue now by professing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue by singing together the hymn, Not All the Blood of Beasts. and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. The text of the sermon on this long day Thursday is from the epistle reading for today from Hebrews chapter 9 reading verse 22. Indeed under the law almost everything is purified with blood and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. This is the Today, there is blood all over the place. There are buckets and buckets of blood, as thousands upon thousands of lambs are sacrificed in the, Jew in the Jerusalem temple for the Passover festival. Tradition says that the children of Jerusalem would scurry out of the city walls and rush to the Kidron River and wait to see the waters turn blood red as all the blood of those lambs sacrificed in the temple ran down the drain and out into the river. Yes, there was a lot of blood. And there's a lot of blood here today, too. Oh, not so much the physical kind, but the kind of blood that's all over the scripture readings, that's all over the hymns on this Monday Thursday. The sight of blood makes 
many of us squeamish, including me. And perhaps the bloodiness of the Old Testament reading and the epistle reading for today seem odd or primitive to you, maybe even somewhat disgusting. But as we shall see, blood is essential for life and for our eternal salvation. Indeed, we are saved by blood. Now, the Old Testament reading for today from Exodus chapter 12 sets the stage for the first Passover. The Lord, of course, sent nine plagues to Egypt in an attempt to convince the Pharaoh to release the Israelites from their bondage. The Passover marked the tenth and final plague. To every house that was protected by the blood of consecrated lambs, the Lord would come down and spare all those firstborn sons. However, whatever house did not have the blood of the lambs, the destroyer would enter that house and kill the firstborn. Now this was such a momentous event that God commanded that the Israelites should celebrate the Passover annually as a memorial feast. Moses told the people, when you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. Take a hard look at what is going on in the Passover. Dwelling only on the blood and the violence is, is too shallow a glance. It will cause us to stumble in the face of our pacifist sensibilities. After all, what kind of God would perpetrate such wrath against even innocent little children? Killing the firstborn sons for what? And then to top it all off, they were to commemorate this bloody and gory event every year? No, my friends, we have to look deeper than that. This is more than just about killing some firstborn sons and saving others. After Moses announced the institution of the Passover, we are told in Exodus chapter 12, verse 27, quote, the people bowed their heads and worshiped. They recognized that when the Lord spoke his will, the only proper response for us is not to question why, but to worship. The Passover is all about the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. Remember, this is what the Lord said concerning the Passover. On the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The tenth plague was a divine warfare against God's idolatrous enemies, against the Egyptian false gods and the oppressors of his people. That's why God struck down not only the firstborn sons of Egyptians, but also the firstborn of the cattle. But what does God have against cattle? That's not the point. The Egyptians embodied their false gods in cattle. Remember the golden calf? And so, when God would strike down even the firstborn of the cattle, as, and the Egyptians worshipped these cattle as gods, what message was God sending? Oh, but look more deeply than that. Later in the book of Exodus, when the Israelites finally were at Mount Sinai, the Lord said this, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. This means that under all that Egyptian blood, you should see not innocent victims of a capricious God, but impenitent sinners receiving just judgment by the one holy God. And all of God's acts of judgments on idolaters, from the flood to the Passover, to the conquest of Canaan, to earthquakes, to famines, to pandemics, 
All of these are intended to warn us about the consequences of idolatry and impenitence. These are previews of the final judgment. Oh, but we need to go even deeper than that. And now, I sincerely hope that my words offend you. All of those acts of judgments that God has brought upon them, you should see that that is precisely what you deserve and more for your idolatrous sins, for every time that you have not feared, loved, and trusted in the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, you deserve for the destroyer to come to you and spill your blood on the ground while your soul is swiftly taken to eternal punishment. The Lord is no tame God. The apostle, known for writing about God's mercy and grace, St. Paul, also wrote this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. And don't deceive yourselves into thinking that you always fear, love, and trust in God above all things at all times. Because you don't. Truth be told, for their own sins, the Israelites deserve the same fate as the Egyptians. Their blood should have been spilled too because they did not love God above all things at all times. But it wasn't. And why not? Because they were always good and perfect in keeping God's commandments. So we know that's not true. No, because of the blood. The blood of the Lamb. To the naked eye, the blood of lambs and the blood of the Egyptians would appear to be the same thing. The sticky red substance, you shed the blood of one and the other, what's really the big difference? But God attached his word to the blood of the lambs. And he gave his people a means of salvation from the destroyer. Under the blood of Passover lambs, you do not find any merit or worthiness in the Israelites. It's not about them. It's about the promise of deliverance from a gracious and merciful Lord. So the Passover was to be celebrated by Israel, above all as a remembrance of God's election of them by his grace and the promise of his protection and salvation from all of their enemies. The Passover was not a celebration of the death of idolaters, but a thanksgiving that God desires to save idolaters who repent of their sin. After the Israelites were spared from death by the blood of the lambs, the Lord himself attached a word of forgiveness to the blood, the blood of lambs, the blood of goats, the blood of bulls, all of that in the sacrificial system of his people. Through the pouring out of blood, in the most holy place of the temple. God provided a means of cleansing and forgiving his people of all their sins. As the text of Hebrews 9.22 says, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. In God's system of justice, the innocent dies for the guilty. And for the innocent to die, blood must be shed. Keep that in mind as we now move to the upper room on this night, the night when our Lord was betrayed. It was a Passover meal. The Is and so Israel's deliverance from Egypt was in view in minds of the disciples. And the recently shed blood of those thousands upon thousands of lambs at the temple was still fresh in their minds. Surely as they celebrated this meal, it was going to be just like they always had done from they were, when they were little boys on. They knew the Passover liturgy by heart. They do it every year. And they thought that the disciples thought that they knew precisely what was going to happen now as Jesus led this Passover meal. But at a couple of places in the liturgy, the normal routine way of doing the Passover meal, Jesus did something new. St. Mark writes, 
As they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them. Okay, so far, so good. No surprises. That's how it was always done. They would take bread, speak a blessing, break it, and share it. That's all the same thing. But now here comes the bombshell. Jesus said over that bread, take eat. This is my body. And the disciples must have looked at each other in a bit of bewilderment. Jesus then seems to slip back into the normal liturgy again. He, he, he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. Okay, back to normal again. That was how that all went in the, in the Passover meal. But then another bombshell. Jesus said to them, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Or as the Greek literally says, poured out on behalf of the masses. Once again, Jesus boggled their minds. At this unprecedented Passover meal, Jesus teaches three things to his disciples. First, that in a short while, his body would be given and his blood would be shed on the cross and that under that apparently senseless slaughter of a righteous man, an innocent man, they should see that his death is a ransom for the masses of humanity, for the sins of the world. This is God's final judgment on sin. All the blood of the lambs and the goats and the bulls that was shed in the past and that was still going on at that time was now coming to an end. Jesus' body given, Jesus' blood shed is the last and greatest sacrifice of all time. Second, Jesus teaches that in a mysterious and supernatural way, the simple bread and wine of the Passover meal was now, by the power of his word, also his true body and blood, given to his followers for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And when Jesus said, do this, he commands that now that meal, his meal, the meal of his body and his blood in bread and wine, fulfills the Passover meal and that one is now to be celebrated until the end of time, for it proclaims his death until he comes again. And third, Jesus was teaching his disciples that the Passover, indeed the entire sacrificial system of Israel, were but types or figures for his once for all sacrifice and his death on the cross. And now those Old Testament ceremonies must give way to the New Testament in his blood. Everything in the Old Testament was pointing forward to the coming of our Lord in the flesh as the Messiah, to redeem his people and to win their forgiveness, not only for the Israelites, though, but also for the Gentile. Think about this. And now I hope my words bring you much comfort the blood of Jesus shed on the cross for the masses means that it was shed for you too. The blood of Jesus saves you from death even more than the blood of the Lamb saved the Israelites from death. The blood of the Passover was the blood of dead lambs that temporarily saved the Israelites from physical death. The blood of the covenant the new covenant in Jesus Christ is the living blood of the living Lamb of God who saves you from eternal death and judgment in hell and gives to you eternal life in spite of your idolatry. How can blood save? What does it have that it can do all of that? Life. God said in Leviticus chapter 17, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And that is what the blood of Jesus gives to all who receive him by faith. Life. You are saved to eternal life. Not because you perfectly keep the first commandment, or any of them, 
but because the blood of Jesus shed on the cross covers over your heart and purifies you of all sin. Remember that the next time you do take Holy Communion. For you are saved by the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We continue now with the prayers. On this holy day in which you gather your disciples in the upper room, we come to you, O Lord, in your name, with the concerns of our hearts for ourselves and all people. And hear our prayer. Grant to us zeal for your house and love for the things of your kingdom. Preserve those who are unable to gather together as they wish, and grant them their desire quickly. Give your church harmony and peace to confess your word with one voice before the world. Cover us with your blood, and grant us your spirit, that we may walk in your ways to the good Deliver us from every temptation, and lead us to know and do what is holy and right according to your word and command. Bless those preparing for baptism and those being taught the faith, that they would be steadfast in faith in you, in the Father, and in the Holy Spirit. Hear our prayer, O Lord. In the midst of plague, that threaten, and a world filled with conflict and terror, give us wise leaders, O Lord, that we may be preserved from harm. Guide those who make and administer our laws to act in kindly and prudent ways, and give to all judges knowledge to render justice with mercy. Bless all military personnel, emergency and medical who defend and help us here and abroad. Hear our prayer, O Lord. As generously as you have given to us, O Lord, teach us to be generous in giving. That the Lord may not suffer want, nor your church be deprived of the resources to serve your purpose, both here and across the world. Hear our prayer. Have mercy, Lord, to spare your people and turn this pandemic away. Preserve the sick, comfort the fearful, and grant to the dying your peace. Give us healing in accordance with your will, strength to bear up under the burdens of this mortal life, and comfort and hope in this and every trial. Hear our Heavenly Father, your Son instituted a most blessed sacrament to eat and to drink, that what is promised in his testament may be truly received by his friends and heirs. Have mercy on all who are kept from your table in these extraordinary circumstances, and do not shut them out of this supper forever. Let the words of this testament echo in their ears and hearts, and in true faith, let them believe these words, trusting that what they receive spiritually in faith, exactly what your Son has both won and declared, the forgiveness of sin. Stir up in us a desire to commune with our fellow Christians on your true body and blood, and bring us soon to the table. Hear our prayer, O Lord. You know, O Lord, what we need, and you have promised never to abandon Help us to endure in faith, and with a joyful countenance, receive the blessings of your grace and the answers to 
with you. 